Uh, OB walking down the street before I came here. It's very, oh, uh, very idyllic. What's that? I said Roger, it's Mr. Rogers you run into. It's Roku, yeah? Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Oh, that's right. I've been to that, the statue. Must on the other side, in front of, uh, I, I call it Heinz Field. Yeah. What the hell? Accenture, Dr. Deesta got that. Holy cow! I mean, I think they get better, like, love and publicity if they just say, you know what, we're just gonna keep calling it high school. Anyways, but yeah, Mr. Rogers, if you haven't seen that, there's a huge monument to Mr. Rogers. Okay? And Mr. Rogers started in Boston. On PBS. No? Okay, uh, we have a public station in Boston. So. Anyways, thank you for coming. I call this a talk back for those of you who haven't heard that term. It's from the theater. And uh, it's just something that, you know, after a show, there's sometimes a talk back. Maybe a high school came, maybe subscriptions, so, you know, subscribers are there, and they. They come back after the show and some of the cast members come out and talk about the role of the show and it's a very exciting thing in the theater. And sometimes you're asked to do it and sometimes you're not. And that's, that's a dark day in the theater when you're asked not to do the talk back. You know that the winds are changing and you better start looking for your next job if you're not invited to the talk back. I'm kidding just a little bit. Anyways, so I thought I'd, you know, before we take our beautiful, perfect selfies with the perfect lighting and instant, instant, um, any, any burning questions, whether they're, you know, you've been wondering for three months or 35 years, I thought maybe, Heidi, I thought you knew it all by now. One or two, yeah. And after one of those shows, I had said, I wondered how it came to be that you and Dion wrote a song together for the show, and you yeah. said it was a good story. Oh. And I was wondering if you might be able to share any bit of that story. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Um, so I am involved in the show called The Wanderer. Woo! And, uh, thank you. And we did it last year. Yeah, last year. Feels like longer than that. But um, it, uh, we did it at Paper Mill Playhouse, which is a repertory theater and sort of like on the road to Broadway. It has done everything it needs to do to get to Broadway. It got the reviews, thanks to Mike Wartella and the show and the whole nine and great audiences. It's just that there's like 50 shows trying to get into Broadway right now. So. You, we just gotta be patient and hope the stars align. And it's been great to originate a role like that. It doesn't, like in the theater, that's definitely a bucket list thing. And it takes a long time to be involved in something, create a role, and hopefully it goes to Broadway. So it's been very a very special, unique journey. And my character, I don't want to give it away, but he's, you know, he's, Got his mystery about him, and Dion is Dion from Dion and the Belmonts. Um, he he's written a lot of songs, so they some songs are are not his in the show, but most of them are all songs he's he's sang. I felt like at the end of the show there should have been, or there there could have been a song written for the show for that place in the show, and it took a long time because there was a placeholder and he, didn't, he wanted to defer to the producers and I said, the producers are up for it, but I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And, but I just kept chipping away. And the long story short is that like over Christmas, you know, I'm, I'm on FaceTime writing a song with, with Dion. It was amazing. And, and he, you know, I had this idea and I, I did a, a voicemail. I had the idea in my hand for um, 
It's called uh, You Belong to Me. But when I sang it to him, he was like, Joey, it's a, it's a little too light, you know? He's like, I don't know, you know? So I said, well, let's toughen it up, you know? So we kept the idea. We did some lyrics. He wrote with one other guy. It was three of us that wrote it. And then he wrote, he sent back this tape, and I didn't know a Pro Tools guy, but I chopped that thing up. And like the end of the song sounded like a good B section. So I said, well, let's put this before every chorus, and let's put this bang, 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 bang. And here he is sending me a song. He goes, oh, okay, and he does it. And he, it just kicks ass, like his demo. And uh, he's like 81. He's unbelievable. And he's a legend. I mean, Dylan quotes him, uh, you know, he was on Sgt. Pepper's, you know, the, the album. He was one of those guys on the album. I mean, he's, his, his, his reputation speaks for itself. And uh, Steve Van Zandt, well, Springsteen is a big fan, but Steve Van Zandt is like the musical um, sort of, uh, why am I losing that word? Um, he's, he's not a helper, come on. So what's that? Director. Not director, assistant, but he's, he's sort of like, a, he's just part of the team. And he's amazing, and he loves the song too. So I'm trying to push the song, but I don't want to push it too much. So I got Steve Van Zandt going, it's like it was always there. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't even know, it should have been there the whole time. I love it, it's a great song, I don't know why. So I'm like, I've got this rock and roll legend who's like, rooting for me. I'm writing the song with Dion and it was such a special, you know, you know, time and, and I really hope it gets a chance because so many people have put so much time into trying to get it to Broadway, so hopefully it will. And uh, that's it for tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I talk way too much of these things. So, uh, sorry, but that was a good question. Yes, I know. Uh, the Andy Warhol Museum. It's the best. You haven't been? Yes, it's amazing. It's so good for so many reasons. But I remember how it started. Like he was such a working class guy, you know, and he was a city guy. And like the way he came up, and and just to see his whole arc as an artist, and of course of how much he pushed the boundaries. Uh, it's wonderful. And I just love being on the river, on the bridges, looking at the park. I think it's, it's my favorite city because it's the, the way you get the football stadium there, the, back, the baseball stadium there, the bridges, the parks. It's, it's really beautiful. So enjoy. Yes. It's amazing that I don't have to choose, you know, because I really love, you know, this is this is perfect, you know what I mean? It's, it's just a good size, it's super intimate, and there's just something you get here that you don't get in other places. Not necessarily, because I think at the same time, I think, and it's not brain surgery, really, but there's something about how a new kid's concert, thanks to you guys, and us guys that somehow make an arena intimate, right? You know, and I don't know why, it's like the best kept secret that like, they went into the crowd! You know? <laughs> <laughs> Bands like don't even, it's like it never, it was like, blows people's minds. <laughs> um, and we've been doing it since we were kids, so um, I think, yeah, that being said, I think we're able to make it intimate no matter what, and I think you can, but it's just, it's just something about the back and forth of this kind of a venue. And um, I like the theater too because you can disappear, you know, into the role and, and really go there, but um, I think I can do that too, you know? And, and I mean, I do it every, all the time, but Tonight was a little bit more turned up as far as like me getting to disappear in the moment and know that you guys are along for the ride, but still 
kind of, you know, I, I indulged that a little bit more, I felt like, mm -hmm. tonight. So, thankfully, I, I don't get to choose, so I don't have to choose. But thank you. Hi. <laughs> Am I going to eat one? I, I should try one. Are they good? Now, so the bakery owns this theater. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I think the owner is here, so be nice. Um, really? Nice. I love it. I love it. Okay. Take the cannolis, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Forget about the thing. Get the cookies. Did you get the cookies? I don't care about the concert. Did you get the cookies? <laughs> Joey, oh, I don't know. Give me the cookies. Um, yes. You said your daughter is going to Taylor Swift. Who is one concert you're dying to go see? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, 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 I missed... Um, <laughs> um, the guy, the British guy, the kid. No, Harry Styles. I would, I would be way more of an Harry Styles concert guy than Ed Sheeran. I love Ed Sheeran too. Again, you don't have to choose. But I, I didn't see Harry Styles, so I was uh, I was bummed about that. I've, I've, I've always been on the road, so. I get tickets from my family and then I'll get to go. Same with Olivia Rodrigo, because I love that album. And uh, you know, when you have kids, you have a connection with the music through your kids right. too, so it's, mm -hmm. it's more meaningful stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I think that, that would be my choice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Any future plans for you and Griffin? Oh, thanks for asking. He's in Boston right now. Um, and he's at camp, in a music camp. So I think he's gonna be at the uh, Melody Tent show, which is in August. And uh, he's, he's got a few things planned. Now he's telling me what he's gonna do as opposed to. Uh, it is a very special thing and um, it's wonderful, you know, to witness his talent and his drive and the whole line. And he's still very much 15 and a half. Yeah, no, it's 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 awesome. It's awesome. It's very cool. I I, I uh, yeah, you can't really measure it. It's wonderful. But thanks for asking. So yeah, he's doing good. He's he's super into the guitar now too. So uh, yeah, he's having fun. He's having fun. Yes. Keeps me out of trouble. Keeps me well behaved. Keeps me healthy, and uh, I love doing it. And uh, so, thank you for giving me more opportunities to do so. All right, a couple more, and then we'll. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the stuff that I do is is pretty pretty simple. Um, it's nice to, you know, I did, I used to do uh, Desperado by myself, which, which had a thing to it, but I was just like, well, 
why wouldn't I have Sean do that with me? And so I love our new version together, which feels really good. Uh, started doing, maybe I'm amazed again, because I stopped doing that for a while. Um, and yeah, it's fun, I, it's fun. I mean, last night I thought it was so cool that I messed up, like last night. And it was uh, a couple of nights ago. Yeah, but it, and that was that was Supergirl, which I've been playing forever. But like as I joked, I was like, you know, because the more comfortable you get, mm -hmm. the more your kind of the moment kind of grows. And and uh, but like I said, you can't you can't practice being in the moment without practicing being in the moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you mess up. <laughs> but. Um, it's it's been it's been fun. It's been really fun. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's. I mean, all those songs. There's a there's a thing to those songs. There's a you know. I'm not. I'm I'm obviously not a virtuoso. So I know that there's songs out there that are played like maybe I'm amazed and desperado that the lyric is is easier to sing over those chords in a simple way. Um, and I love that. I love that, you know, me and Sean can, you know, <coughs> have that and fill that void. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get quite a kick out of it. Yeah. But I can't get too much of a kick out of it. I'm not Yeah. So, 14 years ago, if we donated a book, we got a download of I was yeah. not technologically savvy at that time. Any chance you'll release it on iTunes? I should do that. <laughs> you should, I should do, do that. that. I should, I should <laughs> give it a new mix and get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all over the place, yeah. though. I mean, you know, I just did Joey and the Brave Hearts, which <laughs> stuck together, which I love. And I just decided it should be Joey and the Brave Hearts and not Joey yeah. McIntyre. But, um, um, that might just be Joey McIntyre. I don't know. Yes. Now, I have, now I'm like be. Jekyll and Hyde. It should be. Which one? Stuck together? Or no, Five Brothers? Uh, five Brothers. Okay, it all right, we'll get it done. Joey McIntyre. Done. And... I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. One more. Perfect. Baby Blockhead. When am I, when am I making a new album? Um, I'm in the process. I like to say that I've been working on an album. The only reason I'd hesitate is because I put a time frame on it. And then I go, oh, I don't know, because it's not going to be out tomorrow. But I don't have to do that. So I'm writing more and more. We wrote another song today. This gentleman over here, he goes, that's the one. <laughs> he almost made me do it. I was scared. He was like, no, do it, do it. We didn't do it. Maybe, maybe the next show. So thanks for the, uh, yes, the next show. Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> It's, so. We're not hooked up. Look at it, it's all packed to go. Um, I'm not gonna sing it. Uh, it's good. It's sort of like a sister song to uh, I Got It Made. It has a little bit of that vibe. But um, yeah, coming coming soon. Next show. Yeah. Cincy. Yeah, it's good. Take some selfies. All right, I love you. Thank you so much.